Hello geologists. In this short video we're going to go over how we understand that crustal rock is created at the diverging plate boundary environment. This would be our mid-ocean ridge environment. We sometimes just call that MOR. And in this environment we have volcanic rocks that form. It's basalt, it's mafic. Um, that form at the surface, they're actually underlain by gabbro. We sometimes call that basalt M-O-R-B, or sometimes we just call it MORB for mid-ocean ridge basalt. So in this environment, we've got two plates that are being created. We have magma that's coming up somewhere in here. We've got to have some magma, and that's cooling and crystallizing as two different plates, and it's an ongoing process, and these plates are diverging away from each other. So that means that the plates are very young on the crest of these mid-ocean ridges and get progressively older farther away from the ridge as these plates diverge. So you've got a, an age progression of that. The ridge is there because it's actually warm rocks and war, warm rocks tend to be less dense than cold rocks. So they're a little bit more buoyant as they essentially float on top of the mantle rocks. So they are at a higher elevation. So these, um, so we've got our mafic rocks here. Those are what's in the crust, and they're moving as plates along with, it turns out, the uppermost mantle rock. Uh, but we're primarily uh, interested in how this um, crust is formed here, the basalt and the gabbro. And our assumption is that it is formed from the mantle. It's derived from the mantle rock. And the mantle rock is ultramafic, right? It's peridotite. It's mostly the mineral olivine, as well as um, some augite, maybe a lit of, little bit of feldspar in there as well. But it's ultramafic in composition, right? And it is solid rock. So um, this is solid rock down here in the mantle, but the mantle convex as a solid, meaning that um, the hot uh, material um, deep in the mantle will, will be hotter and it'll be less dense because it's hotter. Hotter rocks are less dense than colder rocks, so those less dense rocks will rise along these big convection cells, so there will be upward motion in there. And then towards the surface, it probably diverges and does something like this. So this is illustrating our mantle convection, and sorry, um, the focus goes in and out automatically. So, um, so somewhere in this process, we've got to get magma. And we understand this once we do the laboratory experiments to understand how ultramafic rocks melt. And for that, we need to sketch the pressure and temperature phase diagram. So we, we're, by convention, we're going to have temperature increasing to the right and pressure increasing downward. So this will be deep in the earth. And um, temperature will be increasing toward the right, so it's hot over here. So we remember, and if this is a PT diagram for ultramafic material, like peridotite, we could actually do the experiments in a specially equipped lab to figure out what pressure and, condition, pressure and temperature conditions that material will be solid versus liquid or a partial melt. So remember, since there are multiple minerals in peridotite, some of those minerals will melt at lower temperatures at any given pressure. So that pressure temperature phase diagram looks something like this, that we have three different phases, or three different fields of this. Um, the solid phase is favored by higher pressures and lower temperatures, so that's going to be towards the left and down on our graph. Um, so deeper in the mantle tends to be solid. The liquid phase is favored by high temperatures and lower pressures, so that's going to be towards the top of the graph and towards the right. And that means in between these two lines, we have a solid plus liquid phase or a partial melt phase. So that means for any given pressure, it could be solid at low temperatures. At higher temperatures will be uh, partly solid, partly liquid. And at higher temperatures yet, it will be all liquid. So in that partial melt phase, those minerals with the lower melting temperatures are going to melt first. And for an ultramafic composition, the minerals that will have the lowest melting temperatures will tend to be augite and maybe some calcium-rich feldspar. Whereas the olivine will remain solid. Okay, these will melt first.
because they have lower melting temperatures. Okay, so now we need to relate these together. How do we understand this to happen? This will be a question on your first exam, and you should be prepared to draw these as well as write out a complete narrative that explains all of this, basically what I'm saying. Okay, so back to our diagram on the right, we've got upward convection of solid rock here. So somewhere down in here, we'll just call this at, at uh, point A, um, we've got rock that is solid. It is ultramafic in composition. It's solid, but it's under very high pressure because it's deep and it's going to be really, really hot. So on our pressure and temperature diagram, that might plot somewhere down here. Here's point A. Okay, it's solid rock here. It's completely in the solid phase. This is called the solidus, and this is called the liquidus. Our lines that separate those phases on our diagram. So as that material rises, say to about half of its depth here at point B, it's going to lose half of its pressure, but it's still going to be really hot. It might cool ever so slightly. So point B might be right about here that that material will rise along a pressure and temperature pathway that will look like this in our pressure temperature phase diagram. It loses a lot of pressure and only a little bit of temperature. So point B, it's still a solid material. We're still well within the solid phase here. We're below the solidus. But if it continues on a path like that, as it continues to rise, as it comes up here, it may reach a point that that material crosses the solidus. Let's call that a point C. That point C might be somewhere right about in here. Pretty shallow inside the earth. It's going to be below the crust. So by that point, it might be uh, 50 kilometers depth or even less than that, okay? Maybe thir actually more like uh, 10 kilometers depth. So at point C, it's, it's shallow. It's lost a lot of pressure, but it still is hot. Notice that as it's rising here, it's losing a little bit of thermal energy that, that, that points B and C are a little bit to the left of point A, so the temperature is decreasing a little bit, but it's still staying pretty warm. But more importantly, it's losing pressure while staying warm. So at point C, it crosses the solidus into the partial melt phase, solid and liquid. And at that point, some of those minerals will melt out of that peridotite, that augite and calcium which feldspar will melt first, that's going to create a mafic magma. A magma that's mostly made out of melted augite and calcium rich plagioclase feldspar. That magma, going to have a little bit of magma here, it may only be like 5% of the total rock melts there, 10% maybe. Only a small percentage of that rock melts because there's not a lot of this stuff in our typical um, mantle material. So you get a little bit of it melts, but it's the constituents of a mafic magma. That magma is going to rise. It's going to squeeze its way through the rocks. It's going to rise quickly to the surface because the magma is lower density than the rocks on top of it. And then it's going to cool and crystallize up here near the surface where it crystallizes a little bit farther down. It'll be a little bit slower crystallization. It'll form gabbro where it crystallizes closer to the surface. It will lose its heat quicker and form basalt, smaller crystals, aphanitic texture. Um, but we'll get mavic rocks resulting from the crystallization of that. So this is an ongoing process. This just keeps happening. A little bit of melting, a little bit of magma working its way up, that magma cooling and crystallizing, pushing those plates out, uh, filling the gaps, the cracks in the rock, and then more magma coming up after it. But what's key here is that magma is formed from this process we call decompression melting, right? decompression melting. That the rocks are melting, not because they're getting hotter, actually they're getting a little bit colder as they're rising, but because they're hot and they're losing a lot of pressure. And as we saw in the previous videos, when it loses the pressure, it, uh, and it still has a lot of thermal energy, those atoms will be um, moving with respect to each other and bonds are going to break and it can move from, uh, certain minerals will move from a solid into a liquid phase. So there is our story of decompression melting underneath the mid-ocean ridge and that's what creates the crust of the ocean floor 
that is mafic composition rocks derived from ultra mafic mantle material.